Hey y'all, just out here taking a little walk, enjoying the nice summertime foliage. Uh, speaking of summertime, I hope you all have been having a great summer. Here in East Tennessee, oh my goodness, it's been miserably hot. It's been unseasonably hot. Uh, for several weeks now, it's been around the 90, 95 degrees and near 100% humidity. Um, even the skinny people are sweating. It's been pretty rough. So, hey, that brings me to the topic of today's video. After three years of camping in the Camp Easy Teardrop, we're finally going to install an air conditioner. Yes, you heard right. After three years of camping, we're finally going to put an air conditioner in the teardrop. Um, you probably wondered what will be done the last three years. Well, two things. One, we have it camped when it's been crazy hot outside. And two, we have a max air max fan in the roof that it pulls a lot of air through and really cools it down inside. And for most occasions, it's been plenty enough. But the time has finally come to step up to an air conditioner for those really hot days. And that's what we're going to do. For this air conditioner install, I managed to find something called a Climate Right. Now, Climate Right is, believe it or not, it's a doghouse air conditioner and heater. Um, it's basically a mini HVAC unit that sits outside of a doghouse or maybe some kind of electrical cabinet. I've been looking around for one of these on all the different uh, avenues like Facebook Marketplace and whatnot. And believe it or not, this one popped up on eBay. Um, it's brand new, but it had never been used. So I was able to latch a hold of this one. Now this is a 2500 BTU unit. Um, so it's about half the BTUs of a window air conditioner. And I was really tickled to be able to lay hands on this thing. So hey, if you've been following the channel, you know that I actually showed a little B-roll of this air conditioner in the last video. Uh, this video is more about the actual install itself. Now talking about the install, I've already punched a couple holes in the camper with the hole saw. And that's where we're going to pick up. All I did was chuck this in the drill, drill a couple holes in there. I think this is a three and a quarter inch from Harbor Freight. It was built better than I expected and did a pretty good job. Um, the bad thing is where I put one of the holes, it's going to cause me a lot more work down the road. You'll find out what I'm talking about in a minute. So I've got a little level up here. I've already leveled the camper to make sure it's level. Now I'm leveling this little sewer outlet thing. And listen, if you don't have one of these drill hole starters, I'm telling you, you're cheating yourself. You gotta get one. And you'll see why here in a minute. Yep, and they're all right in the middle. So, I'm gonna take and just do it about three times. Make it a little deeper. And it's just a spring in there. There we go. I'm gonna use a chisel point or brad point drill bit, and I'm just gonna stick it in that little dimple and just start drilling in. And you see that the drill is not trying to walk left or right because it's been guided by that little hole there, that little dimple. outside one of these I'm just going to put butyl tape around the perimeter. Butyl tape is really really good stuff for when it gets warm though it gets kind of drippy so you need to be careful with it. There we go. Yeah that's much better. So the reason I'm using screws like this instead of like sheet metal screws or something is that I'm going to put one of these caps on the inside too. I'm afraid if there's ever a night when we're not using our air conditioner and all we had was a hole in here or like a, a louver, somebody could just pop the cap off and look in and see us or, you know, throw something in there. But if I've got a cap on the other side, they're not going to be able to pull that cap off from the outside. And the reason I'm using these screws is that it's going to pull both of those caps together and sandwich them together. 
And these caps are pretty hard to put on, so I want some robust screws to hold this thing still. The screws may not be perfectly aligned. I may have to coerce them a little bit from the outside. There we go. So I'll screw all four of those in, and I'm going to use... I don't know what these are called, acorn nuts. That way they're kind of decorative and you don't just have sharp screw heads sticking out through the outside. I'll show you a close up of that here in a minute. All right, so let's put some light on this thing. A little light I picked up at Harbor Freight for $2.99, check this out. But there is the finished product from the outside. Two Volterra uh, sewer hose fittings on the outside. Now, this side of the camper is the side that's always facing the utilities at the campground, so it's not going to be on the living side, so I don't care, you know, that I got a couple big black things on the side of the camper. But the sewer hoses will hook right in here. And the plan is to put the cool air going in below your feet, and then the warm air, since warm air rises, I'm going to have the vent for that up here. And if it doesn't work as good as I want, we'll just swap them around and try it that way. But that's the plan, and I believe it's going to work well. All right, we're back in the workshop. It's time for a confessional. Um, back when I put the porch light on the side of that camper, um, and I ran the wiring down to the switch and then back up to the light, I actually took pictures of where all the wiring was. That way, if I ever needed to punch a hole in the side of the camper, I could look at it and tell where the wiring is and not you know, drill into it or cut into it. Tonight, I got in a hurry. I knew it was you know coming up dark, and I wanted to get this thing knocked out. I just went and punched a hole in the side of the camper, and sure enough, I cut into the wiring, and now it's going to take me so much time having to fish new wire through and, and redo all that. So, yeah, you get in a hurry, you try to cut corners, and that's what happens. The next step in the project is I bought a 20-foot-long sewer hose from Walmart. It's like 12 bucks, and I just cut it in half, and now I'm... Uh, I'm going to take these hose clamps and put connections on each end, and that's what we'll clamp on to the sewer fittings on the outside of the camper and the outside of the AC unit. Who put a Baby Ruth candy bar in there? So just a little bit of an update. It is cooling off after about 10, 15 minutes, but not as much as I would think. And we got to look and these vents that I 3D printed a while back are letting air out of them. Um, so I just taped those off and I wanna see, you know, how the temperature comes down now. All right, so checking the temperature is already starting to come down. So I think taping the vents up is the ticket. Um, not long ago, probably a week or so ago, uh, somebody on one of the DIY sites asked for the 3D print file for this, and I sent it over. And after a few days, they sent the file back and said, hey, I made some changes to it where the inside part will now close. So I think I'll print that inside part so I can close it off when I'm using the air conditioner. So where did I get the idea of using two RV sewer hoses to put cold air in and bring warm air out? Well, I got that from a guy named Ed Ladd, Edwin Ladd, at a DIY Teardrop Campers Community Meetup a couple years ago. It was pretty cool. So I was actually on the way uh, leaving this campsite, and I looked down, and I saw he has a central air unit sitting on the ground beside this camper, and it's a window unit from a house. And I've heard people say that you can't use it that way, but he is. I want to know about this thing. Okay, it's a regular. It was mounted in the camper okay. when I got the camper. And uh, it short cycled. It, the compressor would run maybe two minutes at a time. Okay. And uh, wasn't dehumidifying because the, the compressor wasn't long enough. 
So I, I had seen posts where people had put shrouds on them and stuff, and I done a little research and uh, I built me a plenum, a shroud for the front of it, and fastened my hoses on the side where the air can spread across the coils and all the controls are inside. Is it working good? It's working great. Yeah. It's, it's done this weekend. It's done. It's kept it 70 degrees inside. It's, uh, you can tell by the water on the ground. It's, uh, it's uh, getting rid of some moisture and all that. So far, it's worked great. Of course, I repurposed all the pop-up stuff. From my, this frame came from a pop-up. Just take, I took the plastic grill off of the window unit and had to build uh, some brackets and stuff to hold the little filter. But this is uh, where the air normally would come out. It goes into the supply hose and then this area here is the return side. So now the original controls, he just said, um, that was on the air conditioner, he took that off, he moved it inside the camper and there's seven wires going to that and he just got a seven wire trailer harness and remotely hooked up the control panel on the inside of the camper that's pretty clever that's pretty clever uh, good, yeah. now this is awesome you've <laughs> man i tell you what I, i'm gonna leave here so much happier and i think i'm gonna be able to make a regular window unit work now thank you very much oh you're quite welcome it's well i got to look you know, i was gonna buy a climate right well you can't buy them now yeah, I heard they're and out the, of stock. The, what yeah. I've heard is going to be five years before they'd be available. Yeah. So I already had this window unit. And, well, and hey, if this window unit lays down, you go to Walmart and you <laughs> buy another one for 100 bucks, yeah. and you're back in action. That's right. Now, it may take a little different combination of wiring. So is that not pretty clever or what? Edwin Ladd is a class act. I've learned a lot from him. I've camped on multiple occasions. Um, hopefully you'll run across him at a campground yourself one day, and if you do, you're going to learn a lot. I think there may be a flaw in my design, though. Uh, these sewer hoses are black and they've got to be soaking in heat and keeping the cold air from being as cold as it could be. So I may need to look and see if there's some kind of maybe silver wrap I can put around this or just a different color, a lighter color hose. You know, as a matter of fact, let's just shoot it with a uh, thermometer and see how it is. So the cold air going in the top, look at that, 85 degrees. So I'm trying to push cold air. Oh, look at that, 87. I'm trying to push cold air through an 87 degree hose. The exhaust coming back to the unit, 91, 92, 93, 90, gosh, 98 degrees. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get some lighter colored hoses or find a way to wrap these in some kind of foil to reflect the sun. I think that'll make a huge difference. Before I spend all the money to test that theory, let me unplug everything and pull the truck around to where this thing is in the shade. Okay, I just backed the teardrop up such that it is still in the full sun, so there's not gonna be any difference there, but now the unit will be in the shade. So let's plug it back in and see if that makes a difference. So there we are. We've got chickens under the teardrop. <laughs> the teardrop is in the sun, but the hoses are in the shade. Let's see what kind of difference that makes. All right, so let's check it now that it's been in the shade for about five minutes. This is the exhaust, and it says 79 degrees. And this is the air going into the camper. And look at that, 69 degrees. So that's a huge difference. So either I need to try to find a way to keep the hoses in the shade or I need to use a lighter color. Is this going to be big enough for the teardrop? I don't know. I mean, I've seen people have 5,000 BTU air conditioners and say that it was a little overkill. So I thought, oh, you know, I'll get this one, but I don't know. Time will tell. Right now, I almost think it may not be enough, but we'll see. When I first installed the hoses, I put the cold air coming out the bottom vent and then the warm air um, going back to the unit in the top vent. And I did that because I know heat rises, but actually when I switched the hoses around and now have the cold air coming out the top, it seems to be working better. And looking at my thermometer, it looks like it's uh, currently 69 degrees inside. And 43% humidity. So those are good living conditions there. 
So that's the install of the 2500 BTU Climate Ride Air Conditioner. Uh, I really hope this thing's going to work out and do what we need it to do. But hey, worst comes to worst, I've already got the sewer hose fittings on the side. I'll just do a DIY conversion of a window unit like Ed, and I'll make a video about that. So hey, all's not lost. Uh, if you like today's episode, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to come back, and until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.